Hello and welcome to SMPD, the podcast where we look back at the cartoons that shaped our childhood. I am Chris Bolton. With me, as always, my partner in podcasting, Mr. Mark Williams. Hello. And, uh, well, sorry, we were away last week. First of all, folks, we um, had some unexpected website problems to deal with. Yeah, you guys Uh, broke it. Yeah. Like, uh, who knew we were so popular that you'd break our internet? Um, (laughs) Thanks for that. (laughs) Um, Yeah, uh, sincerely, yeah, thanks for that. But also, thank you. It's pretty amazing. Um, (laughs) It it is. Um, And because of that, we don't quite mind the the weekend it took us to put it back up. But, um, yeah. Was, uh, but it, it, it was uh, quite handy. We had some lost episodes that we'd forgotten to publish a long time ago. Yeah, so hopefully you didn't realise that we were away. Well, you probably did, because those episodes probably sounded like they were recorded in a different time, in a galaxy far, far away, pre-pandemic. And yeah, and actually in a cave and not on decent equipment. But anyway... <laughs> Uh, luckily, I'd already done all my research to watch. Well, not that I do any research, but I'd watched a load of stuff ready for this episode. So I've been able to watch even more. So uh, without further ado, let's dive into it. We are looking at Banana Man this week. So, I mean, I guess for those listeners outside of the UK, and we know there are many of you, maybe this is a little bit niche. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if Banana Man ever actually traveled. I don't know. I'm not sure. Um, but certainly, you know, in the UK in the early 80s, um, you couldn't move without seeing Banana Man. And and now you can't move without seeing yeah, Banana Man. He's I mean, kind it's... of still around everywhere, isn't he? Yeah, I remember I had Banana Man slippers Yep. Uh, when, I I mean... was, uh, when I was a kid. And I, I don't mean like it was like a Banana Man head or anything. It was literally just a, pe- a pair of slippers with Banana Man embossed on it. But uh, when I was three, that was fucking awesome. I mean, I, I do remember there being slippers that were shaped like Banana Man's head yeah, as yeah, well. Yeah. Uh, I no, remember. We, we were poor. Yeah, I, I remember newspaper with elastic band around it. I remember there being Banana Man slippers that were actually bananas. I remember there being Banana Man stickers, Banana Man pencil cases, Banana Man t-shirts, Banana Man every like yeah. Banana Man. There were Banana Man bananas. For fuck's sake! Like I remember there being a period where Banana Man was plastered all over bananas. Because I guess why wouldn't you? It makes well, yeah, perfect it sense. Reason, I guess it gets the kids even more interested. Um, so yeah, I, I I I do remember there being a lot of Banana Man. I vaguely remember. A couple of years ago, they talked about doing a live action version as well, a film. I I do remember this. I remember seeing the poster and thinking, what the fuck? Yeah. Uh, uh, th- that's going to be terrible, was my initial thought, um, because I'm not sure how well Banana Man translates to film. Uh, but I I'm guess we'll not, never know, because it seems to no. have died to death. Yeah, so. I mean, it was, um, it, was, it was mooted in 2014 as an announced as being released in 2015. 2015 came and went, 2016 came and went, 2020 came and went, and it's still it's still showing us in development on IMDb. Um, but the um, the company that um, that took o- that took over the property, um, they were talking about it when they first took over the, over in about 2017, and they just stopped mentioning it, and the website disappeared. So I, I think the general consensus is that it's not going to happen. Which I mean, I'm I'm not sure how um, how well Banana Man would translate to live action. I'm also not sure how well it would translate to 2021. Um, I mean, he's still out there. Banana Man is is still a character that's out there. I don't, like the cartoon doesn't run anymore. Um, but I think I could be wrong. But I'm pretty sure, uh, certainly at least until very very recently, the the comic was still out there, or the strip rather. He never yeah. really had his own comic that he was always in. Well, alternating between the dandy and the beano. You know, he, yeah, he was, was like he was say. like this kind of vagrant superhero. He could never make his mind up. Like, was yeah. he in the dandy or was he in the beano? You know? Like, and I. Th- got a feeling he may even have been in some of the others as well he's certainly in some newspapers yeah um so he was just kind of this i don't know free agent i guess superhero that went everywhere um but i, I think he's still around and like certainly um i, I guess we kind we, we're diving into the cultural impact before we dive into the show this week weirdly i don't know yeah. how we've ended up doing this but um banana man uh it is still like very much out there in in popular culture like, i feel like he's being claimed unironically by just dickheads is the problem <laughs> like whenever you see a group of stags out on a night out there's always someone dressed as fucking banana man yeah and it's always some big fucking roid head who thinks he's being really fucking clever yeah. it's like no you you don't get it banana man is a piss take of you the, yeah. <laughs> the point is he's thick as fuck like <laughs> you, you're kind of missing the point here um but yeah he's kind of been unironically claimed by those guys who just yeah kind of assume that he is a, an actual superhero. Which, well, I mean, he is. He is a superhero, isn't he? But he's he's actually a piss take of... 
yeah. well, Silver Age heroes really is what it is. Um, yeah. and, and, and I think they do that quite well. Mm. Um, what, what has always surprised me with, with Banana Man, and I've tried going back to Banana Man many times, actually. Um, I bounce off it every time. Mm. I don't know why, because I should love this. Like, I, I should love everything about this. Yeah, um, this is right up your street. Yeah, and I mean, it has, has been covered on this show numerous times. Uh, I've always been an avid reader of comic books. I've always been a superhero person. But even more than that, I was a Beano and a Dandy person. Mm. Um, and, and even as a child, Banana Man was like one of my least favorite strips. I I struggle to, to work out why I don't know. There's just something about Banana Man that I bounce off. I think part of it is the humor. It just doesn't click with me at it's, all it does feel very northern yeah it's it's, um, it's it's that it's that sort of i mean wallace and gromit did it as well but it was it, that was slightly more inclusive but there, there is, does seem a very sort of parochial humor to it yeah i mean well it's, it's certainly northern in in kind of the voices for little yeah. eric stuff like that but it, it's more okay um there are possibly people listening who are going to go absolutely ape shit when i say this based on previous feedback that we've had um look <laughs> I don't like the goodies, and I don't like Bill Oddy, to be perfectly honest. I, it does nothing for me, okay? They're, I, they're kind I, of I like the never... less funny Monty Python. Like, yeah. I, I don't I, mean, think... I, I always... It was one I was aware of the goodies, didn't really... No, didn't really get into any, anything they did. And like, cause Bill Oddy did like a, a nature programme as well, didn't he, for kids? Um, uh, he does all sorts of of nature programs, doesn't he? But yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I choose not to watch them now. But then we have three channels. I didn't have a lot of fucking choice. Um, but yeah, so I mean, I, I always associated him with doing stuff like that, which I wasn't interested in. So when Banana Man was on, I was like, and because uh, that was one of the selling points that my brother goes, "Oh, it's got the Bill Oddie in it." You know, Bill Oddie is like, "Yes, okay." And I wouldn't have said at the time because I had been about six, but I just said, "Yeah, Bill Oddie's a cunt." Um, you know, I just—I mean, I won't I go that did... far. Don't know the band. Anyway, but... <laughs> it's, 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 I, I have no affinity whatsoever towards no, the goodies. No, do I? Bill um, no, do I? Um, I think I, I think know, the goodies is. One. Sorry, come on. Well, as if um, that's a funny one because I, again, same as you, used to read really being on the dandy, so he was always about, mm. and I could just about tolerate the strip, but the cartoon itself, it was like, oh, okay, is that it? It, 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 it means, but well, and I found that this time as well. I mean, by the time it starts, you're like, oh, okay, that's brilliant. Well, that's the that's the thing, isn't it? So that, yeah, I mean, there's a few things just to 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 jump on there. Like, um, yeah, definitely the goodies thing. I, I just, I know I should like it. I know I should, but it just, I I never found it funny. It was always just slightly too silly for me, mm-hmm. and, and not because it was so sanitized as well because it was sort of more of a family show yeah not only was it silly but it didn't have the kind of just childish toilet humor that you'd occasionally get from pythons or yeah. you know and, and it didn't have the structure of something like rent a ghost for instance which mm. was equally as, as silly yeah. and as innocent but was just charming and had this, this well very loose fucking structure to it admittedly um Maybe we should rewatch the goodies. I don't know. Maybe in watching it now, I would like it. But if Banana Man is anything to go by, I probably wouldn't. Um, mm. And I, I try. You know, I, I do try and get into this because, as I say, it should be right up my street. But yeah, you're right. Like the the strip, I would tolerate because it was in the Dandy, and I used to read the Dandy cover to cover. Yeah. Uh, so. Later, when it was in the Beano, I would read the Beano cover to cover I mean, multiple times. In fact, so I would watch Banana Man if it was on, but it would never. I You'd know, never I go looking for it. it. Yeah, I'd never go looking for it. And and you're right. There is these. There are these five minute chunks, and within that five minutes, they just struggle to tell a story. I think is is the is the truth of it. It is a lot of really stupid humor. Yeah. Um. And and very, to be honest, quite basic humor as well. Just just wrapped up in what is barely a story. And you know, that can work. I mean, the, the nearest thing. I think we can compare Banana Man to. I, I'm fucking sticking both boots into it already, and I didn't intend to. I'm <laughs> only like 10 minutes in. I was, wasn't intending on being this harsh on it immediately. Um, and it's not that I hate it. It, I, it just doesn't click with me. It leaves me a bit cold, if I'm honest. Uh, but the nearest thing I can compare it to is Roger Ramjet, which we did mm. way back Christ, when. It seems like way back when now. Um, and I remember I 
you hadn't watched that much of it and I kind of had to be like oh you should watch Roger Ramsey it's really good um and I stopped short of saying but well, you know when we were talking about it before we recorded that show like oh it's a bit like Banana Man but it kind of does remind me that it does the two have that feel to it. in their structure and actually in their humor as well but Roger mm. Ramjet just manages to play it straight enough and I think that's the difference is Ramjet always plays it straight yeah which means that when they do have these ridiculous situations they're funny because you've got the straight man whereas Banana Man is just stupid on top of stupid it's silly for silly sake a lot of yeah. the time and, and um, I think not only that you've you've got to take into account as well there's what 25 years between the two yeah. So yeah. no, that everything we everything you saw with Roger Ramjet was a lot was kind of this is what it is. No, this is this is what we do. This is what we produce. Banana Man, it's it's almost like it's trying to hark back to that and trying to be some sort. I don't want to say a parody, but maybe a pastiche. Um, and yeah. it it doesn't quite pull it off because it's not quite as innocent as it wants to be. But at the same time, it's not as it's not as engaging or as encompassing or sort of socially grasping as, as other things at the same time would have been. Yeah, I think that I think that's quite an interesting, um, interesting word to use actually, and to, to draw a distinction there. I think Roger Ramjet is a pastiche, very much so. It's a it's a pastiche of the kind of super spy, kind of sixties mm. thrillers that you'd get, uh, all all wrapped up in his, you know, superhero guys as well with his supersonic jet and stuff like that. But that that's definitely a pastiche, whereas Banana Man feels more of a parody on sort of Silver Age superheroes and stuff. But if you're going to be a parody um then i think you have to i i think you have to have a straight man in there is the thing because parody only works when there's a straight man to bounce it off and there is no yeah. straight man in banana man it's just stupid after stupid after stupid um you know when you when you think of some of the, the really great parodies look at things like uh, police squad and naked gun yeah. and look how straight they played like yes. they're hilarious but they played totally straight um, because that allows the situation to be ridiculous, whereas Banana Man isn't that. It, it just gets stupider and stupider and stupider the longer you watch it. And I feel like there's, there's two ways it could be really good. It, it could go hardcore on that parody, but put a straight man in there, and I think actually that was all that would be all they would need to do to make a lot of this work. Or there is actually like this genuine thought gone into this as a story and banana man mm. as a character and all of the, the surrounding characters as well. Like he's got an origin story, you know, we understand how his powers work and to be fair, like for its time as well, this is really well animated. We had some famous people doing the voices, you know, there was money thrown at it. So the other way you could have gone with this is to have just literally made a straight superhero cartoon. Yeah. Um, and, and if you, you know, you could still make it funny, but it didn't have to be ridiculous, you know, um, but it's kind of neither of those because it is just this weird mismatch of, of both things. Yeah. And, and it just doesn't work because of that for me. Yeah. And I mean, like, a lot of the humor as well. It's a, there's some very gentle humor in it. It's a very, you know, I mean, um, the, the first gag you get in the very first episode isn't quite so gentle. Um, he's playing happy families with a babysitter and that's not a euphemism. Um, you know, so I mean, there's, there's no, there's, a gag where where this where they're playing half families and he he says he's looking for whoever it is and she says oh he's not at home he's popped to the shops and it's that's a stupid thing that you say with the kids when when you are playing games like fucking happy families and and, and card games like that because it's it's something that will make us make stupid kids laugh so you get that and then the rest of no the rest of that episode is kind of no there aren't that many actual gags in it there's no there's some relatively humorous bits but there's no actual gags in it but then in the next episode you get the so sort of the chief of police rings him because the um. Uh, the gang are about to break out of prison, and you get the joke where he says, "Oh, I'll be right along." I mean, Banana Man will be right, be right along, and stuff like that really lands and it works really well. It does. Because, it no, does. That, that's because that's no, that's quite clever in in its writing. But no, some of the other stuff you think, really, that's the fucking joke. And and that's that's what I'm saying. Where actually, if they really committed to making it that more, yeah. again, if you think of Adam West's Batman, if they, if they make yeah. it more of that comedic superhero family show. Yeah, I think they really would have had something there because that is a repeated gag that, you know, Eric yeah. continually says, oh, I'll be right there. No, I mean, he'll be right there, Chief, or I'll go and tell him or whatever. You yeah. know, and then, then at the end of every episode, there's always a bit of a nudge, nudge. Wink, wink. Good wink, job. Yeah. yeah, good job. They don't know I'm Banana Man kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and all of that works really well. It's just yeah. the, the absolute stupid shit that they throw in in the middle for no reason, the slapstick. And they're just, look, if you're going to have a superhero belting out corny one-liners 
Again, Roger Ramjet does this. Mm. Okay, that's fine. But everybody has to realize how bad they are. That's that's why that would be funny. Yeah. But in this, like he's throwing these corny one-liners out like some sort of 80s action movie reject. Yeah. And we're supposed to find them funny. Well, well, that's it. But they're not. You find the situation funny. Yeah. That's how that works. Yeah. And I mean, like in that second episode, I'm sure he does it later on. So I only only got to to watch about three three or four episodes today. Um, Been a crappy week. Um, uh, But the the one where they're having one, but they're they're in the tunnel and he gets, you know, he's chasing them, then he gets ahead of them and he's pointing a banana at them. He said, oh, it's it's loaded and I'm not afraid to use it. And they they all stop like it's a gun. I guess shit like that, it's not, well, that is the stupidest thing in the world. But as a kid, you would because of bananas. No, shaped a bit like a gun. gun. Yeah, yeah. So, so you, you can kind of see that, but because it's played so straight, it's like, oh, really? That's kind of the line you're going for. We don't be, and again, because you know, because of the similarities with, with West Batman, you know, where there is a gadget for all seasons, it may well be a banana gun. We don't know, that, and, and that's, that's that's the joke, and that that's yeah. fine. But because they because they play it so straight, and you know, nothing is ever made of it, it's just that. Well, is it a joke or not? That's that's the thing, yeah. Like somebody needs to to call him on all of that stuff, or if not, they need to lean straight into it again. That the tone in something like West's Batman, I feel, is what they want to achieve. Yeah, but they just don't because yeah, they will pull this this banana gun out, and he'll you know, and he's got the voice and everything. He's like, careful, it's loaded, and I'm not afraid to use it, or, but not in an American accent. I don't know why I did that. Um, <laughs> but you know, he, he's got he's got all the the sort of superhero voice to deliver that line. Yeah. He's got the pathos to deliver it, but then people have then either got to be genuinely terrified of the banana gun, which they're not, or yeah. they've got to call him on his bullshit, which they don't. Instead, yeah. they just leave the gag just kind of land. Hang in there. And and that happens a lot. You know, there's um I've watched quite a lot because as I said, I started watching it before the website blew up. Um and then I've I've sort of carried on because they're only five minutes, I've watched them here and there in between. So I've watched the majority of the first season. I really am trying to like this. I, I want to. I do want to like this. Um, so I really am trying. So I've, I've watched quite a bit in, in sort of little chunks. And, and there's episodes later on where, like, there's a flood. And they identify that the cause of the flood is that the weatherman has put a giant plug in the mm. bottom of, of a lake somewhere. And it's all yeah. backing up and running down the street. Like, that is a ridiculous concept. Yeah. Okay. But again, you could see the Joker doing that in West Batman. He'd have a great big yeah. Acme plug or something like that. But yeah, the difference exactly. is in how that is played off and how people react to it. Nobody goes, why is there a giant fucking plug there? You know, it's just, oh, there's a giant plug. I'll go and pull it out. And that's that's that, you know. Um, I just feel like everything, everything except the kind of writing, really, um and yeah and the direction to be fair everything except the writing and direction seems to have a lot of time and money spent on it and a lot of care and attention yeah. and then they've just like they've spunked out these little five minute scripts about nothing full of unfunny gags yeah and i think probably at the time as well people are going ah people love banana man it'll be fine and it's yeah, kids I, and, and it's five minutes goodies. long yeah and it's the goodies so it'll it'll all be fine don't worry about it yeah, um exactly. Whereas actually for me, even as a kid, I really knew that it wasn't all that good. Banana Man was one of those shows where I was just like, oh, fuck. Like, all right, there's nothing else on. I'll watch it. But it was yeah. never like, I can't wait. You know, this wasn't Super Ted, for instance. Where I'd be like, yeah. if Super Ted was on, I was like, excellent. I want to watch Super Ted. Yeah. Um, which I, I mean, that's the thing. Like, I mean, no, I, I, I think it's on the list. Um, but like, again, with this, this, this was BBC, so I didn't know. It was one of those that it kind of... I was aware of it, and I'd see it occasionally if we were at other people's houses because BBC would be on rather than ITV. But it was never something I was like, "Oh, well, I want to watch that." I know I want to go looking for that. Um, so yeah, it was a bit of it's a bit of a strange one. Um, one thing I did notice today, actually, so I watched a couple today, and so the second episode where you've got the heavy mob trying to break break out of jail, you start where this this nice little pan across where they're all leaning on the bars. Mm-hmm. Two of those fuckers are thin enough to get to just step through the bars. I mean. Well, the two of them who were leaning on the um, the gent wasn't leaning on the bars; he was in the back. But at least two of them could have just literally just you know, turned sideways and sidled through. I mean, again, you know, there's a gag right there, then, isn't it? That they yeah. could that they could land and they don't. You know, I think that's the haunted house episode, isn't it? The one you're referring to, which again is, is as a concept. No, it's the it's, it's the breakout one where the mole is going to dig under the prison and get and get them. Ah, oh, right, okay, yeah. It's, it's a very early one. Yeah, because then they show up a bit later on as well, and it turns into some sort of Scooby Doo mystery. Mm. Um, but again, they they just don't fully commit to yeah. the 
to the whole thing. Like, if that's the case, like, make Banana Man scared of the ghosts and things like that. And Yeah, that's it. I, but they've put all of this, like, in the general world, and maybe it is because he exists from a comic strip, an actual comic strip background as well. Like, there is law, you know. There, I remember there being a thing that, like, mouldy bananas would weaken him and stuff like mm. that. You know, he's got weaknesses. He's not just this invulnerable yeah. superhero. He, he has, yeah, he has a kryptonite and stuff, which is mouldy bananas, you know. Um, but... It's just it, it just falls at all at all those tiny little details and those little things that actually surprised us and raised Roger Ramjet up, yeah. you know, because it was so witty and so well written and played so straight, you know, all those things that actually made that such a joy to watch just aren't present here. And yet somehow it's just because like I feel like he's ingrained in the national culture. Like yeah, you definitely. can stop any British person from probably i mean kids today even i reckon as well probably probably from the age of 10 up you could probably stop any british person and just say who's this with the picture of him and they're going to go mm. that's banana man yeah and like they might not know the backstory they might not know about eric they might not know no the, the, the lore no, but they'll they'll, they'll recognize they will banana know man. banana man definitely um I, maybe part of that as well was because of this huge like i joked about there being banana man bananas yeah. Um, but there was there was like definitely a huge. I remember in school there was a huge health eating campaign with him as well about eat yeah. your bananas, get your protein, stuff like that. Maybe partly that's why I dislike him as well because I was a fat kid and there's no way I'm going to eat a banana over Monster Munch. I still don't particularly like bananas to this day. I will eat one now, but they have a weird fucking texture, so I'm not <laughs> like of all the fruits, bananas are probably like my least favorite. I know I'm weird. I know everybody else fucking loves them. All right. I, but... I, I don't mind bananas because there's not a lot of seeds and shit in them. Well, I mean, there's that. You don't have any pips or seeds to spit out, but they're like, like they're either too mushy mm. or they're too hard. There's no. I I don't feel like there's a perfect, but like a mushy banana is fucking horrible. Yeah. And then a hard one is just this weird, chewy texture that I yeah. don't think fruit should be. Like yeah. fruit should but... either be crunchy or soft. It should, it should yeah. be. But there's a, there's know. also a, a far greater potential for comedy than pretty much any other any other fruit. So. Well, I mean, there is that, yeah. Like, they, it is a versatile fruit for, like, yeah, it's a dick, it's a gun, it's a boomerang, it's a yeah. smiley face. You can, like... you can slip people with it, you can stick it in an exhaust pipe and make something backfire. Yeah, All you can go full axle foley with it, yeah, exactly. Like, it, it's it's a very versatile fruit. Uh, yeah. I just don't just not for eating. really care for it. Also, generally home to poison the spiders when you buy them in supermarkets. At least once a year you read a story about somebody that's bought a bunch of bananas in fucking Asda, and like this great big fucking face hugger spider has crawled out and like bitten them and they've spent like two weeks in hospital and lost a fucking digit or something. So look, what I'm saying is bananas maybe not the huge health thing that they've cracked up to be. Like stick to strawberries. You never hear about fucking black widows living in strawberries, do you? No, that's true. Probably some other shit you can get from strawberries. Like just don't eat fruit. Stick with processed food. Nobody ever died from eating fucking monster munch, did they? So, you know, you can't even choke on the fucking things because they'll dissolve if you leave them in your throat long <laughs> enough. Perfectly yeah. safe. So maybe there was that as well. Maybe I was just like, oh, I fucking hate bananas. Like, he might as well be Tomato Man. Yeah. Like, I fucking hate them as well. Yeah, he's not Beef noise. Burger Man or Monster Munch Man, is he? He's not my fucking superhero. Now, the Hamburglar and Ronald McDonald on the other, like, straight away. Yeah, Those absolutely. are characters I connect with. And I'm, I'm only half joking here as well, listeners. Like, I, I genuinely think there is something in that. Like, having that healthy eating message shoved down my throat um, probably did lead to a little bit of resentment. Because, when, like, when I say I was a fat kid, I was fat. I had to go and see dietary experts. I, I was under the care of a doctor. Like, I was fat. So I didn't need reminding of that in watching Banana Man. Like... You know, I didn't get out watching Batman. Like, Batman didn't tell me to fucking eat my bananas, did he? No. So, go get... When you went to the dentist, you had Banana Man fucking stickers as well. Remember you used to get little stickers in the dentist? Like, they were always fucking Banana Man ones. I was like, well, I don't want a fucking Banana Man one do good in cunt. Like, just give me... I don't know, give me rhubarb and custard or something instead. Give me <laughs> chaos. Don't give me fucking bananas <laughs> and big cheesy grins. Fuck off. Um... About the best thing to come out of Banana Man, really. And it's not really related to Banana Man. I've really gone off on one with him now. And I really <laughs> dislike this fucking character. I just like everything about him. I do like the blue and yellow colour scheme. Um, I will say that. Um, I like one the of my... crow as well. It reminds me of the Cure adverts. Yeah, the crow's, the crow's pretty good. Um, but you don't like Bill Oddie. So 
you know, um, I, I mean, some of the villains are pretty good as well. I think General Blight, General Blight is pretty, is pretty cool. Yeah. The villain. Yeah, Doctor uh, Gloom's a bit shit. Yeah, Doctor Gloom is a bit. Weather Man. Yeah, the what's what's the gang? Is it's not the Ant Hill Mob because that's wacky racist. Heavy, Heavy Mob. That's it. Um, yeah, they're really cool. Uh, I like them. They're really funny. Um, so there are some decent characters. I mean, <laughs> Chief O'Reilly is problematic. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, I was, I was gonna I was gonna save that one, but yeah. Why does he live in a giant tit as well? I don't. Is it supposed to be like a it's meant to be a police helmet, 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 isn't it? I think. But even but in if, the if 80s, he's a chief, then, he'd be wearing a flat hat, wouldn't he? Yeah, I was gonna he say even in the eighties, we didn't see many bobbies walking around with big tits on their head, did we? Let's be honest. Even when we were right here. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was around here. Um, but no, they were in. They were pretty much in the fucking black and white checked stripy hats with the little peak by that point, weren't they? Yeah. You know, and then those tend to have given way to just nothing now. Um, you know, so so you can't get out of a speeding ticket anymore by claiming he's not wearing his helmet. I don't think you ever could do that anyway. Yeah, you could. If they're not fully in uniform. Was that was that actually a thing? Because I tried that once and basically got told to fuck off. Um, <laughs> well, that's, it's it's one of those that if they tell you to fuck off, you generally back down. Yeah, I didn't. But, but yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, yeah it, it certainly used to be the case whereby because they weren't fully in uniform. Yeah. And well, it, anyway, I still got done. Probably didn't help that I argued with him. Um, <laughs> yeah. This, nah. this is apropos of nothing. We're completely fucking off topic here now. <laughs> but yeah, he appears to live in a giant blue tit. Yeah. Um, but I, I think you're right. It, it's, it's obviously meant to be a fucking policeman's helmet. But again, there's that whole side of it. Like, Eric doesn't live in a house shaped like a banana. I was just going to say, you know, if, that, if that's how it works, then why, why is Eric not in a banana house? Apart from that, it might give the game away. Again, it's that commitment level, isn't it? It's like, what what are we here? What are we aiming for? Yeah. Because I don't... If it was one thing or the other, I think I would be more inclined to go with it. I still would have issues with Banana Man as a character, just because yeah. he's a cat. I, and I still, I still think of him as a cunt, as I say, when I see all those people dressed up as him. Like, everything about him is cuntish in a way that, like, West's Batman is charming. Hmm. Do you know what I mean? Like, because West Batman is... This is partly Batman as a character as well. Like he's got the answer for everything, and yeah. he's you know he's got like the bat shark repellent, and he'll do the fucking bat tusi and things like that. And, he, and yes, he's ridiculous, but he's never showy about it. That's just yeah. what needs to be done to save the day. Whereas Banana Man, like instead of just flying through the sky, he's got to fucking swim through the sky. Yeah, that's, that's the that's one I was going to say. I was, was going to say. Yeah. Like, just fuck off. It's not funny. Again, it's that kind of ridiculous level of humor. Hmm. He's like, look. That that just makes you a cunt, as far and as the I thing is as well. I mean, you do you set your stall out with that, and by the time you've done, I don't know, half a dozen, you're kind mm -hmm. of out of ideas. So then you start repeating or go on variations of themes. So instead of doing breaststroke, he's now doing backstroke. It's yeah, still I mean, the, it's the, still the swimming joke. You know, there is there is a lot of repeated animation in this, but then you know every fucking hero yeah. action show of the 80s is guilty of yeah. that. You know, I mean, like, I, it's, I, mean I, I, said, I don't rub up against that so much because I said that was just something that was done. And but I, I it's, don't... It's, it's, the, it's the fact they repeat the gag. They just, you know, let's say he's, he's doing front crawl one, one week and he's doing backstroke the next. Yeah. It's the same fucking joke. The same you know, joke, it's, it's, yeah. it's the um, the Austin Powers joke with all bleeping out the swearing and go through the different... It's that. It's like, okay, we get it. Yeah. We've done it now. Let's fucking move on. But but again, like as much as I, I hate that joke and it makes me hate him as a character even more... I actually really like the animation and some of the camera work in mm. particular yeah. uh, for such an early eighties animated show is absolutely stunning. Like we get sweeps around him as he's flying and you know, the transformation sequence, you see all his muscles bulge out and everything. Yeah. It's quite funny in the transformation sequence because it does the top, it does everything North of the waist first. And, and then the bottom, it, it looks like he's just completely skipped leg day. They, yeah. And there all of a sudden a, they just expand like a balloon. It's like, oh right, okay then. There is another thing, and I forget what type of banana it is, but if he's like if he's one type of banana, I distinctly remember this being a thing as well. It, his legs do stay as like scrawny little Eric's legs. <laughs> so he is literally walking around like a big fucking roid head who skip leg day. Um, For a and he's, year. yeah, and like he's got like some banana man's face and banana man's upper body, but he's got little Eric's scrawny little legs. And he's all sorts of weird ones. It's like I remember there being ones with banana milkshakes. If you drank a banana milkshake, you turn into liquid bananas. Um, he's all okay. sorts of weird shit like that. Moldy bananas, I say, would weaken him. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And again, all of that stuff is really good, and some of that can be funny. But then you have to have all of this other just bullshit. And why make him such a dick? 
it's no yeah. wonder that it's, 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 you know what I mean. It's no wonder that all those stag dudes dress up as him because they, like I say, it's completely unironic. They don't understand that he's a dick. Mm. That's that's the thing. Um, and and but, I mean, I th- I'm obviously that that's part that's the decision they've made, and that's part of the character because they, um, like, clearly he's a complete douche monkey, and Eric is not supposed to be. Eric's supposed to be a lot smarter and all the rest of it. But you're just like, well, fucking hell, why why does why does no, why does that have to be such a difference? Why does Eric have to be smart and Banana have to be a complete thick cunt? Why can't he be? You know, why can't they just you know be kind yeah. of? When you, when you look at other characters, and you look at um, you know, you look at the likes of Superman and Clark Kent. You, know, you don't have Clark Kent being a genius and Superman being thick as shit. You know, well, no, because they, you they, don't they're one to, in the same as well, yeah, aren't they? You, you don't need you don't need to have such a big differentiation between your characters. Because at the end of the day, you just know it is the same person, and. and be it the, the the hero side of it or the the human side of it is putting on a putting on a show, a show. so you, but you don't have to make such a big deal out of ma- of making them different because no. they're, they're they're never seen together and realistically nobody's ever going to think a little kid from Yorkshire is Banana Man yeah so yeah, it, it doesn't need to be such a big thing I mean the, the kid always reminds me of um, the kid who's in uh, This Is England yeah uh, I can't think of his name you know the one with the the, the slightly Slightly like plumped yeah, yeah. and shaven head. It yeah. always reminds me of him. I don't know why. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't get that at all. But um, yeah, I did, there is something weird about the relationship between the two of them as well, though, because I, I, you know, I think Clark Kent and Superman is the obvious comparison because Banana Man is, is so like Superman. But I think as a character, it's probably closer to Billy Batson and Shazam, uh, or even Prince Adam and He Man. Where there's like this complete transformation from it's not just the same character but wearing glasses, you know, it's not a Bruce Wayne Batman thing yeah. or it's not a it's not a Clark Kent Superman thing. It's Little Eric and Banana Man. They are clearly very different. But then, you know, in the case of say, let's say Billy Batson and Shazam, like they're still kind of the core of the character is the same. He's just older and bigger and more muscly and has powers. And the same with Prince Adam and He Man. Like the yeah. core of the character, even though they're clearly two very different individuals. Yeah. The core of those characters are the same. They have the same values. They talk the same. You yeah. know, whereas these are, this is like a split personality. Kind yeah, it's of more like a Jack on Hyde type isn't? thing. Yeah. So it's like, you know, basically he's having a fucking food allergy, isn't he? Is the thing. <laughs> it's like he, he had food allergies before we knew food allergies were a thing. Like he had a banana and he ballooned. Basically, that happens to some people with peanuts. It just so happened to. Yeah. Hello. It happened to him with bananas. Like. Unfortunately, he ballooned so much that it also shrunk his fucking brain. Um, I, there is a, that probably I remember, is Dick. I don't know. That's interesting. Well, well Roy's Dick do that, don't they? Well? Yeah, but it's not really Roy. Well, I guess I guess it is like Roy, isn't it? Because it's 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 a big old protein injection, basically, is what he's getting in it. He's, yeah. he's given himself a massive protein hit, so clearly his body can't can't process protein. That's the issue here. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean. What would happen if he ate like raw chicken? Would he become Chicken Man? He'd probably die of salmonella. Well, I well, I guess rotten bananas weaken him, don't they? I don't know. These are questions that I need answered. I mean, there was Apple Man as well, wasn't there? So, was there? Yeah, Apple Man was one of the villains. He had an apple for a head. Like he oh, had. I, literal... I don't think I got that far, but I may have just seen a picture. Google it. He had a literal yeah, apple. Yeah, big, for big, head. big red head with a green mouth. Yeah, he looks like something from fucking Return of the Killer Tomatoes, the cartoon, not the film. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I can see him, yeah. So this this basically was a cartoon about food allergies, when you think about it, before they were a thing. Um, in which case, he definitely should have been fucking, shouldn't have been promoting fucking bananas. He should have been allergic to it. He should have been like, hey, kids, stay the fuck away from bananas. Yeah. Because, like, they'll age you 20 years, shrink your dick, and shrink your brain. Like, stay the fuck away from bananas. <laughs> Weirdo. And he was like, it was cumulative as well. Yeah, it was an allergy, because it was cumulative. Like, occasionally, he wouldn't be strong enough, even as Banana Man, so he'd eat another banana. So then he's well, getting even... Like, even in the very first one, like, they, um, Dr. Gloom shrinks him down to a baby, and they feed him a banana, mm. and automatically straight, he goes straight back to being Banana Man again. Yeah, it's it's a it's a proper allergic reaction. Little Eric is allergic to bananas. Call it what it is. <laughs> it's actually something to do with the moon, isn't it? But it, I can't remember. Yeah, it's because he's from the moon. Hang on, he's from the moon, and the moon is banana shaped. Okay, pretty sure that's it. 
Right. Okay. That's that's comics, not cartoon. But yeah. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. He's from the moon, and the moon is banana shaped. I'm almost certain that's why he's Banana Man. I mean, he really is very much like somebody. Clearly, just went. I'm going to take the piss out of Superman. Yeah, the, well, and I mean, maybe maybe that's another reason why I do bump up against is because it's not done affectionately. And if it was, yeah. you know, again, like West's Batman, if it was, this is this is a very clear take, and this is what it is. But it is done with love and affection. I, and there's a certain there is a certain element of the Batman character that West's Batman dials into, you know, the, the world's yeah. greatest detective and stuff like that, as opposed to like, you know, the Dark Knight. Like there, there is an element of that that they're just heightening. Whereas I don't think Banana Man particularly dials into any specific element of Superman's character that makes you go, you know, like Eric isn't particularly an outsider or anything besides being like some scruffy little northern git. Like that's just, (laughs) he's in a town full of scruffy little northern gits, isn't he? So he's not an outsider there. Please yeah. don't write in and complain, Scruffy Northern Gits. We love you, really. <laughs> we <laughs> but do. you know what I mean. You're, you're like he is. He is characteristically. I'm sure he's characteristically offensive. If you live up north, oh, he certainly would be. If you give him a Welsh accent, put it like that. Yeah. Um, um, just like Chief O'Reilly as well. Yeah. Um, just looking at the origin um, for, in the comics, and there there are some varying uh, theories on on or varying versions of origin. Um, so the first one is that he was rocked it to Earth from the moon as a baby and gained his powers because the crescent moon resembles a banana. There you go. Banana I knew Man I'd read that somewhere. Yeah. Banana Man resembles Superman in having a kryptonite style weakness to moldy bananas. Number two. Uh, and a fortress of solitude style building at the North Pole made out of a giant banana. Don't remember that. No, me either. During early board meetings, the designers thought of having Banana Girl accompany the series. The girl would have been called Margaret Wimp and be the sister of Eric, but the idea was scrapped on production because the concept of two children being related without having parents in the show would be too far-fetched for children to understand. However, the the idea was later revised in the Beano. And in 1991, the dandy annual Banana Man's origin was changed to that of being a normal Earth baby in a maternity hospital who obtained powers after unintentionally eating a banana in which General uh, General Blight had hidden a stolen supply of Saturnium and accidentally left it next to Eric. However, well, the later issues refer to the original origin story. I think I remember that as well, actually. I don't remember that one. Uh, I, I would have been reading the Dandy Run about then, but I don't remember that. Probably could have skipped Banana Man by that point. I was like, fuck it, Banana Man. Three pages that, to read. That sounds awfully familiar. Like, I remembered the moon thing because it was just so fucking nuts. And mm. I don't remember don't I remember it from, like, reading it as a child. I remember it because I remember reading it somewhere since. Yeah. Um, but I I've got vague recollections of this banana thing. Like, I think I can almost remember reading that. Um, who fucking knows? Um, I, let's say I wasn't, I wasn't bothered enough about it to, to yeah. really give two shits. Um, I was more, if, if anything, I was always more annoyed with banana man than I was <laughs> like enjoying it. I was always, Oh, fuck off banana man. Yeah. Prick. Um, I, yeah. I, I mean, I'm fairly sure I, I, Originally, I would have read things cover to cover, but eventually I got to a point there were a couple I'd skip uh, in both the Beano and the Dandy, and I think Banana Man would have been one because I just didn't care. I would have still read them, um, but yeah, it, it was it was never something that would stick out. Like, one thing I, I can guarantee you I wouldn't do is when they used to bring out the little uh, books every sort of every quarter or so, you'd yeah. get like these little pocket sized books. They cost like two quid. I think I've talked about them on the show before, and yeah. it would be like a like a little paperback book, and it would be one story of one character. And yeah. if there was ever a Banana Man one, I'd just be like, oh, no, fuck that. Yeah. You know, if it was, it save, was anybody else. Win. Yeah, if it was anybody else, even the rubbish characters, like fucking Three Bears and shit like yeah. that, I'd be like, oh, yeah, I'll read that. But I'm not fucking reading a massive Banana Man fucking... But I, I've got no interest in, similarly, in the Banana Man live-action film. I think this would work horribly in live-action. Yeah. Um, because, again, I, like the tone is wrong. But like, I think there's probably a world in which you can do this as a sort of CG reboot. And if you yeah. get the tone right, I think there might be an appetite for it now. Um, but live action, like it's too <sighs> stupid, too silly, too cartoony. And it's, it, would, it's it would such a like, weird it would end up like concept. the Scooby Doo um, live action without the charm. I think. Yeah. Um, and I think that know. I mean the prob the problem they'd find is that they'd have to go one of two ways. They'd either have to say, right, we're gonna completely reboot it and make it just as fucking generic as every other kids version of a superhero movie that that we get or we have to try and keep it to the original but increase it in length exponentially so we can get a full-length product out of it 
neither of which will work because Banana Man doesn't lend itself to what we now look at as a superhero movie. No. And the character doesn't lend itself to being 90 minutes. No, definitely not. I mean, you could do a 90 minute story with him. I think you've got, he's got enough villains and, and certainly someone like, I think someone like General Blight is interesting enough and there's enough you could sew into that for any modern era. If you could bring in some elements of PTSD and stuff like that, you could create some decent villains for him, which ultimately is all you need for a decent superhero story. Um, but you'd, you'd really have to dial back on just the stupidness of it all. Yeah. It, it just Which, and, and that, and that's not that's not Banana Man then, is it? No, exactly. You you lose an essence of the character. Now, as I say, for me, I would prefer that. But I look, I know I'm very clearly in a minority here, or at least I thought I was. I was expecting I was expecting to have to sort of um, convince you how shit it was, to be honest, because everybody else seems to love it. I, uh, I um, it just I was never bothered. No, it, me, it's me either. Didn't get it. But like I said, um, I started saying earlier on, and then we got sidetracked. One of one of the main connotations I have with Banana Man isn't actually anything to do with Banana Man at all. It's that um, he's in blue and yellow, mm. and I my first computer was a Sinclair ZX Spectrum, which had a very limited color palette. Yeah. Blue and yellow were two colors that were used frequently. Yeah. Uh, so blue and yellow were colors that I liked, but also one of my favorite games around this time, I probably would have been six or seven, was Bomb Jack. Mm-hmm. Now, Bomb Jack, you played this little superhero dude uh, with, with a cape and a cowl with two little horns on it. Uh, and you would fly around the screen collecting bombs before they go off. It was the Banana Man game to me. Yeah. Like, there was a Banana Man game. Yeah. But this was a better Banana Man game than the Banana Man game because Bomb Jack on the Spectrum looked exactly like Banana Man. Yeah. Uh, and that. so I, I have a weird connection between the two and actually if you look at a picture of the cover art of bomb jack now other than the colors being different because he's i think he actually wears a red cowl and cape I but yeah, i can't remember seeing it basically looks like banana man yeah um so yeah the actual banana man game was shit i remember <laughs> but why am i surprised because banana man himself was shit i mean it says it says something as well that like for all the banana man merchandise memorabilia that there was i've certainly got none around me now I was going to say the right. fact that you have none is quite is quite a statement. Yeah, and, and I don't remember there being the one thing you'd think there would be, and I don't remember there being at all was action figures. No, I don't remember. And either. if you're gonna and you, and if you're gonna be a, a superhero show of any ilk like that, you'd think there'd be some sort of action figure, even if it was just a rubbish little plastic one. You, but there was. I, I don't remember there being anything like that. And there was li- there was fucking banana man. Everything else, pajamas, dressing gowns, comics, pencil cases. I'm not joking. It was every fucking way. Coloring there, books. There was even yeah. a banana man musical. What? <laughs> In 2016, um, uh, it was reported banana man would turn into a musical for the West End. An initial launch took place on the 2nd of February 2016, showcasing it. The musical ran from the end of 2017 to the beginning of 2018 at the, uh, the Southwark Playhouse in London. Now, oddly. Of anything you could adapt Banana Man into, I think I can see that working. Because you've only got a two-act structure to work with, so your little five-minute stories are fine. Mm. Um, and, and you have got two very basic acts. You know, villain does something bad, Eric turns into Banana Man. Eric, Eric says today. Yeah. So, um, and it's, it's, musicals can be silly enough. That's the thing. They can be silly enough, especially if you're going to, if you're going to break the wall and bring the audience in, like, yeah, they can be grand and silly and showy enough. I can I could see that working in the same way that you could see it working, I guess, live on stage as a pantomime or something like yeah. that. No, uh, that I can see it working as more than a musical. I've got to be honest. Yeah, definitely. Um, but but either way, I can see I can see either of those working better than a film or an animated show. I guess the animated show was just such an, it's an easy leap from, you know, it's a comic strip. So you get yeah. five minute, you can recycle them. But they, but then, you know, in later years, they would do this far, well, in my opinion, anyway, far more successfully. You know, loads of Beano and Dandy characters ended up jumping onto TV. There was a Dennis yeah. Menace cartoon. Yeah, there was a Nasher Nipper. There was a, a, a Nasher Dan from the, from the Dandy. You know, there, yeah. there were all sorts. 
Yeah, I mean, I I distinctly remember one of my favourite, I'm going to say as a kid, but like I was in double digits when this came out. Um, but I remember there being like an animated Beano special that came on a VHS tape. It was like 50 minutes long. Now, all of them on there, like many of these didn't make it to series, but they had like, yeah, they had Dennis, they had the Bass Street Kids, they had Minnie the Minx, they had all of them on yeah, there. And the thing is as well, like when, when because I think it was only Dennis the Menace that had its own series, had its own series, and like Nash and Nipper were part of that. And so they had like a bit like you had with um, Animaniacs and stuff, there'd be a yeah. separate cart, there'd be a separate show within a show for them. But you'd have recurring, like, no, Walt Softy was obviously in it, but then um, the, the Bastard Kids would pop up, Minnie the Minx would pop up, just yeah. because you know, they're part of the same property. I did see something relatively recently. There was a CGI version of the, uh, Dennis the Menace. Uh, I did, and I, didn't, I don't remember seeing Dennis, but I remember seeing Walter on TV but, and being really fucking offended. I mean, to me, a CG version of Walter just kind of looks like Millhouse in my yeah. head. I, I, yeah, don't know, kind of. I don't know why I'm making different that shape nose, but yeah, apart from that, yeah, yeah. But they but, they made him far more. I mean, Walter was a funny one. Obviously, we've gone off topic a little bit here, but uh, Walt, Walter Softy was a funny one because he was never early on. He was never sneaky or duplicitous. He was just a bit of a nerd. Mm-hmm. And over time, they made him far more. Um, oh, he became a villain. Yeah, he became a villain, didn't he? Yeah, um, but that that was never the no. That was never the the origin. No. Um, and they, they made them into Randall um, from from Recess, um, and yeah. So then, by the time we got to this CG version, which I only saw a bit of it, it was on. I think I was picking Jess up from her parents' house, and she was watching it. Or I say she was watching it; it was on. Um, and yeah, you know, he was. It, it's almost like he was that character who it's okay to bully because he's actually not. You no, know, he's actually you know, knocking on our hero all the time, so he's going to get his comeuppance. And that's yeah. not what you want to be teaching kids. No, it's never okay to bully. Um, <laughs> never. Um, so yeah, I I don't know. I haven't I haven't seen any of that. Um, I dropped off the Dennis cartoon once it hit TV as well, pretty early. Yeah. I think it's on our list to do. I'm pretty yeah, sure. Yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Um, but certainly that early video I loved. But I I remember them following up with a dandy one. But I don't remember Banana Man being part of it. That's probably the a licensing thing to be honest. It was probably one of those they couldn't they couldn't do it because it was licensed elsewhere. Maybe, um, yeah, I maybe mean, I hadn't thought of that. I mean, coming yeah. back to your earlier question, it did air in the US um, on Nickelodeon. It was a companion to Danger Mouse, um, but it was. Oh it, God, those two things don't go together, do they? But they, they were both British, so they kind of just chucked them on together. But it, I mean, it, that is like if you could if you could put Banana Man before or after any other thing, Danger Mouse is because that is like here is the absolute best version. Of what you're trying to do, yeah. And now here's Banana Man. <laughs> like, yeah, it, it, again, it's like trying to sell only fools and horses by putting EastEnders on. Yeah, again, how how the fuck? Like we we compared Roger around it probably because of the length as well. But actually, yeah, a much better comparison is to compare it to Danger. It, it's got the same level of humor, but again, Danger Mouse as a character played absolutely straight as an arrow. Yeah. And that's the key. So that when and Danger Mouse got ridiculous, as we talked about on our Danger Mouse episodes, it yes. got absolutely fucking stupid at times. But yeah. DM was always so straight, and you had Penfold then being the one calling attention to it as well. They would frequently break the fourth wall and stuff like that. So that humor worked. Yeah. So to go from that to fucking banana man. Yeah. Like, um, oh. Yeah, it, it is. Um, it's a strange one. It, it also it aired in Australia as well on ABC um, in their after school um, slots, and it's considered to be one of the classic Australian children's shows. Joe, I was just about to say, I bet the Australians loved it. Apropos of nothing, I've got nothing to base that on. I just seem. To <laughs> I have. I live. I lived there for a year. Their TV is shit. Yeah, I, I just seem to think maybe it, it plays better out there. I don't. I don't know. Maybe I, it's the I, whole. I don't know. Um, fear yeah. of spiders coming out of bananas. Maybe they. <laughs> They're more used to spiders, so they're not. Maybe, um, yeah, I, yeah, I won't go into that. Um, but yeah, it's it's considered like a classic show for ABC. Um, I, I think it is over here. To be fair, I think like I think this is very definitely a, a me thing or an us thing. I think we're in a minority, and I'm sure listeners, you can by all means write in and tell us, and do tell us what we've missed and why you loved it, because I know people do. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I just. I have never got this show for a multitude of reasons, a, a lot of which I hope I'm spelling out now, you know, and, and I really want to like it. This isn't like a fucking before somebody jumps on my dick again. This isn't like a raggy dolls thing where I'm just saying like, this is shit. But I'm not, I'm not saying that. <laughs> to I'm be just fair, we didn't that... say that about raggy dolls either. That was just the interpretation. 
Well, yeah, somebody thought we did and we didn't. But yeah, uh, you know what I mean? This is not me ragging on it for the sake of ragging on it. This is me just saying, like, I, I don't... What? Just following raggy dolls with ragging on it. I mean, I, I, that wasn't intentional. Um, <laughs> I feel like I feel like banana man level humor is just rubbing off on me now. That's the problem. Um, this is not me ragging on it for the sake of it. This is just me saying, like, like I've... Like I said, I fucking tried. I've really tried with this show. I don't know how many times, but there's just something about this character that makes me just go, yeah, cunt. <laughs> like, and I think that's a problem, you know. When you yeah, when you're trying to when you're trying to watch a show and invest in a hero, the fact that you think he's an absolute douche. Well, this is it. And I mean, you look at you look at more recent stuff, and the whole thing of the anti-hero is obviously a lot more pre- uh, prevalent now than it was in the '80s, and we have that, but. And you and that's fine. You can do that. I mean, that's been a device in literature for centuries. But you need to do the work. Mm-hmm. You need to have yeah, a re- yeah. you need to have a reason to hate him. You need a reason to think he's a cunt, and then see him redeem himself, or see him try to redeem himself. This guy is just a poster child for, child for fucking ADD. Yeah, uh, and and food allergies, and just like he's just everything. I like he he couldn't be more unlike me as a child. Like if if relating. If relating to a superhero is, you know, is something that, you know, if you're projecting onto the character and things like that, which is what you do with all the best heroes at the yeah, end of the absolutely. day. Um, I absolutely cannot project onto Banana Man in no. any way, shape, or particularly like six, seven year old me who's morbidly obese, like don't wish to be horrible, but probably the smartest child in my class. So not exactly thick little Eric running around, kicking a football around the field in a scruffy jumper. Do you know what I mean I was far more what to the softy as a young child? So I'm just like this. This does nothing for me. And like I, I don't understand at all. Mm. Um, and and yeah, there's the whole thing as well of like everybody's speaking in a weird accent, which you know, and, and I don't mean again. That's not me having a go. But they are very regionalized accents. So you have the, the very strong Irish accent with with Chief O'Reilly. You have the very yeah. strong Northern accent with Eric. You know, whereas. A lot of other shows, for better or worse, had these kind of sanitary RP. I, was just saying, of... it, it, I mean, you're probably the same as me. It was, it was anything that from here was RP, or it was American. Yes, exactly. So I mean, um, so, I mean no, that's I mean that's something that I that I always have noticed is that accents are always different because unless they were Queen's English, which was what we sort of recognise from most stuff we had up here, or it wasn't like an American sitcom. It was like, what the fuck are they talking about? What do you say? Yeah, and, I, and I mean, just for context, you know, in the same mindset, both Ivor the fucking engine and Fireman Sam go through me like nails on oh, a fucking fuck chalkboard. Me. This isn't me saying like just because it's not it's not an accent that I recognize. All right. Uh, they go yeah. through me like nails on a fucking chalkboard. Can't. Yeah. You know, but even when you look at something like, like Thomas the Tank in our day, narrated by by Ringo Starr, hmm. like it's. He hasn't. He's not exactly Scouse, is he? No, but when and he's narrating Thomas the Tank, he's not. It's a, it's a very gentle version of a regional accent. Whereas this, yes. it's very thick. And yeah. given this kid's supposed to be about nine or ten. Well, I mean, it's played for comedy again, isn't it? That's the thing, and it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, um, but and probably offensive if you live in that region. I I, I don't know. Um, yeah, but it's certainly, not... it, it is certainly like the stereotypical image of the North. Yeah. that you had in the in the 80s when it, it's grim up north and everybody's eating fucking grey sandwiches and mushy peas do you know what I mean and like, they've all got whippets they all wear flat caps none of them can afford proper clothes clearly from what Eric's that is the myth that's being perpetuated yeah. as the north you know they, there's a constant blanket of fucking fog every time they fucking pan past his house there's fog everywhere you know it, it's literally just missing somebody with a fucking hoop and wheel running down the street so <laughs> It's, it's like the fucking Hovis advert. Like, come on. Surely it wasn't that bad in the mid 80s up north, was it? Again, I don't know. I didn't go there till probably the mid 90s when everything was fucking banging. So yeah. who knows? But that's that's certainly not it's not what I would like to think of the north of being. Like. No, and, and now having spent lots and lots of time up there. For, yeah, it's not my experience of the north at all. Yeah, not at all. Not enough um, drugs to start. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm not. No, I'm not going there. Um, yeah, very, yeah. very, very clearly joking there, Northerners. Yeah. Um, so I, 
I think that didn't help either. Was was trying to decipher all of that as a child. Yeah. It's like, mm, I, fuck this. I'll just watch Danger Mouse then. I understand well, that. Yeah, and there's a flying the car, so yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, I, I, it's a bit of a strange one for me, Banana Man. I mean, I, I'm not really sure how much I've got left to say about it. It's just one of those that I was aware of it and. Having not seen it since, uh, no, having seen it in dispatches and then not seen it since I was probably about nine, um, when it came up, I was quite, you no, know, quite, yeah, yeah, I'll go back and watch that because, again, I you know I quite like my comics, I quite like my superheroes. This should have been something I was drawn towards, and yeah. I wasn't as a kid. And part of that was the fact that, that we didn't used to watch the channel, we used to watch ITV because the, 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 you know, the kids' programs that we watched were, were on ITV. So I'd only ever see it occasionally anyway. So it wasn't something I was ever that bothered about. And I thought, I'll give it a go. Because you know, this should be, again, this should be you know, in my wheelhouse. This should be something I'm quite you know, quite happy to watch. But the three or four I watched today were probably enough, to be honest. Yeah, I mean, I, I feel the same. As I said, I've tried many, many times. I really do want to like this because I feel like I'm the one missing out. Yeah. Um, but I just can't. And and I've watched a hell of a lot this time. I've watched nearly the whole first season. Incidentally, listeners, as always, we advocate you get things for free, but it is all uh, so we advocate you pay for things, but it is all available for free. Got everything else backwards there. It is all available for free on the Beano's YouTube yeah. channel. Like this this yes, is legally is. available for free. It's also on Amazon Prime. Um yeah. it's so not gonna be for long because Fox have announced that they're producing a new Banana Man series. Uh, they announced it in February this year. So once that goes into production, it's all going to disappear from free from free to, uh, free channels anyway. Well, look again. I'll give that a look because if it's updated properly, like I want to like this. I want to like this. I just can't because it doesn't. It should tick all of my boxes, and actually, it ticks none of them. I'm not interested yeah. in healthy eating. Not interested in bananas. Not interested in little Northern Eric and his whippet collection. Not interested in Chief O'Reilly living in his titty house. Well, not interested well, in any of it. In the first episode, can't even remember what she looked like. Not interested in the newsreader either. Not interested in the fucking mole thing. But actually, no, actually, I mean, that was quite interesting. The the, the newsreader joke was quite interesting. Actually, no, again, we're in that in that episode where they're going to break out of prison. The her reaching out with the TV and all this stuff. Again, that there's some thought has gone into that. Well, she's his girlfriend, isn't she? Like they, they, him and newsreader, uh, like That's she's the Lane Slane it? character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, um, I, I, so... I, I didn't get that far, but in the, in the, so the first time we see her is in that second episode. Um... That's weird as well, isn't it? Because she's too old for little Eric. Oh God, yeah. Because um, yeah, like she, you know, she's in her like, mid twenties ish, even earlier. Uh, maybe even later. I don't know. Yeah. Um, but yeah. No, again, and again, very eighties newsreader. Something you you can you no. Know, you could put Lizzie Webb in a dress, and that would be her. You know, with a big the fucking second hair. Second time you've referenced Lizzie Webb on this fucking podcast. <laughs> uh, what can I say? I've got a really good memory of useless shit. Or you've got a thing for Lizzie Webb. One well, there's two. that too. Um, but yeah. So I mean, but I mean, the, with the the big fucking hair and the wide shoulders and shit, you're like, all right, okay, fair enough. But they, they make the gag about the fact that you no, know, they unless Banana Man goes to wherever it is. Actually, no, it's the pilot episode where um he goes to meet Dot Gloom. And it's like, no, the world no, it's unless he turns up at this point, the world's gonna end and the midnight film will be cancelled. And it's five to midnight. So then he goes, Oh, so she reaches out the TV. he says, oh, I wonder where he is. So she then answers him, reaches out the TV and sort of no, pats him on the shoulder and tells him to fuck off. And then she goes and does it. We have the whole episode, comes back, and it's still five to fucking twelve on the clock in the newsroom. I mean that's that's pretty poor. Actually. So that's that's pretty lazy. But I thought the whole thing of her, no, of the the direct interaction with the TV and again, there's some nice stuff that's gone into this show, and it's stuff like that I like. It's just I don't like the fucking character. That's the thing. I don't like the character, and I don't like the tone. Now, if that can be handled better in a reboot, I think the tone would be okay if the writing was a bit smarter. Well, I think they kind of go hand in hand. The writer needs to be smarter and it, it needs to lend itself to the tone. As I say, it needs to be, like we say, like Danger Mouse. It, yeah. Banana Man needs a straight man, basically. Yeah. And he doesn't fucking have one because he's a buffoon yeah. and he's on his own. You know, Crow's the closest thing that you get, but Crow isn't in every episode. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I'll, I'll give it a go. I'll give the reboot yeah. a go. But I mean, in the meantime, listen, as I say, like, if you love it, then don't let us put you off. It's all Absolutely. available for free. Fill your boots. 
have a blast. Yeah. And, and let us know but, what we've missed. Let us know what it is that we're not getting. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm the same as you. I've, I've never really taken to it. And in the, the limited rewatch I did today, um, I wasn't that bothered this time around either. But I'm, I'm, I'm the same. I'm aware that more people love it than hate it. So if there's something that we're not getting, if we fundamentally missed a point, please let us know. Yeah. And if you if you lived in a small northern town in the early 80s, also, please let us know. Was it like this? Because yeah. I'm pretty sure it fucking wasn't. No, I'm, I'm fairly I'm sure the industrial north wasn't certain, like that. I'm almost certain it wasn't like that. Um, but let us know. <laughs> yeah. Um, as always, as sort of, let us whatever your thoughts are. If no, I mean, it could be that we've come out of this episode sounding like dicks again, because no, that's apparently a thing. Um, that's every episode, isn't it? I mean, <laughs> pretty much, yeah. You know who we are by now, listeners. Yeah, like, it's been a while. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, what, what, whatever it is that we've no that we've uh, offended you with, please let us know. Um, but yeah, that's no whatever it is that we've missed with with this show, please let us know because I, I I I'm the same as you. I want to like it. There's enough in here I should like, and I just think the execution lets it down. Um, yeah. So Definitely. yeah, if 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 you loved it, if you think we're we're miles off kilter, if you think we missed the point, please let us know uh, on Twitter at smbdpod. Uh, you can go to our website ddpodcast.net, where you can also uh, pick up our previous episodes and our other shows on Facebook and YouTube with the Double M Podcast Network. Wherever you get your podcasts from, be it iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, Amazon Music, like, share, subscribe, leave a message, we get back to you as best we can. Until next time, see you later.